Hello, this is Felix from GM Wolf, and today I will start a new series of videos to show you how to make a very simple uh, car game. Uh, this first video will go over the basics of a uh, of a tire. So, if you think about it, uh, if you imagine your tire, uh, something like that, you'll be able to move it uh, forwards, like so. It's possible to move it in this direction, but it's not very possible to move it in this direction, is it? Because the what the tire will start uh, rolling in this direction only. So what this means um, that if you have your tire and at that particular moment it is moving in this direction, like so. What you want to do is only have it move. Oh, this won't keep its color, will it? You only want it to move in in this direction, don't you? Uh, because that's the way it will roll. And what you want to do essentially is really take off this direction from uh, the car. And uh, if you notice, this here is a um, 90 degree angle. So you can see how uh, this is going to work. Now uh, similarly if your car, if your tire is moving, uh, wait, it's not going to work, if it's moving in diagonal like so, then what you want to do is um, find its current velocity which might be, I don't know, for example, this direction. And once again, a tire can't really move sideways. It will only move in the direction it can roll, which is this one here. And so you want to nullify this velocity here. So you can see how this is going to work. And this angle has to be 90 degrees again. Um, so the way this is going to work with Game Maker is um, we're going to be using for this particular example uh, something called a dot product. So if you see you have your tire like so and uh, it is currently moving um, for example in this direction. Now this will be its velocity so we're going to be calling this um, this is not working for me, pretty, but whatever. We're going to be calling this V. And we will also have its normal direction. And its normal direction just means um, the, it's the vector which is perpendicular to the tire. So in this direction here. Now, this normal direction will have a length of 1. And that is quite important. And it will be more apparent why as soon as I go over what a dot product is. So this will be our normal and it has a length of 1. Now what we're going to use is something called a dot product. Dot product. Product. And what it is is basically the, the it's a way it's a method of timesing two vectors together. So we'll have basically have uh, v times n, and that is the same, and that's quite interesting about dot product, is that it is the same as um, this angle here, which we're going to be calling theta. So the cos of theta times the length of vector n times the length of vector n. Now that is actually really, really useful, because um, if you remember, vector n has a length of 1. Timesing by 1 uh, just doesn't really matter, so you can just ignore this part. Now, the length of vector v is unknown, so we can keep this in. But here is where it really comes quite important to cause theta. What is so interesting about that is that if we isolate it, if we have um, 
theta being equal to one, uh, to zero, then cos theta will be one. And similarly, if theta is equal to 90, then uh, cos theta is zero. Now this is just basic trigonometry, but why it's so useful to us is that if you can imagine this angle here, um, an angle over here, if it was zero, then it means that the whole tire is actually moving uh, in, in completely the wrong direction. It's, it's not even rolling the slightest bit. And so we want basically to completely nullify the whole of the velocity. So you have one times the whole of the velocity. And if it was moving completely upward, so the angle was 90 degrees, cos theta would be zero. And so um, you're not nullifying any of the velocity because it's actually rolling along. And if theta was, for example, I think it's 30, but I may be wrong. My trigonometry is a bit rusty. Um, so if theta was equal to 30 or something, I think it will be 0 0.5. And so only half of the velocity will be um, nullified because it's already because it's partially moving along the right way. So let's have a look at how we can implement this in GameMaker to add our very first tire object. So let me bring up GameMaker over here. And so we'll create first um, in your room because the very first thing you want to do when creating a physics-based world is um, going in the physics panel and actually deciding on your scale. Now why this is very important is because the whole mass and the whole uh, basically scale of the world will really depend on that and if you don't um, follow it from the beginning you may end up with you know some objects being really heavy and some other ones being really large and it really gets uh, quite complicated. Now what I found to work for this particular project was to use a value of 0, 0 to 5. Now um, you might have a few problems if you don't put the comma instead of a dot here that's quite important to remember and uh, for the gravity we don't want any gravity at all because it's going to be a top-down car game and room in physics world as well. So now we can start making a very simple sprite. Now uh, we're going to be using a 32 by 16 sprite and this will give it the appropriate size inside um, the room and we're just going to make something very simple like so and tires are often black but that doesn't really matter. Uh, remember to center it and to name it SPR underscore tire. Now if we go inside uh, our new object, which will be our uh, tire object, OBJ underscore tire, and select the tire here, what we will want to do is first of all define the physics for that object. So we're going to be using physics and we want to have uh, it to be a box and make sure it's the right size, yes it is, and the density is actually going to be 65 because uh, I did the, the maths and um, according to the area and pixel to meters etc 65 gives us about the same mass as a actual tire. Uh, for the restitution we can leave it like so. Linear damping we're going to turn that down to zero. Angular damping we can leave to uh, maybe 0 0.5 and friction we're going to leave at two, 0 0.2 now we have to actually add um, a tire behavior so it can only move in one in one local direction so it won't move sideways to do that we're going to be adding a new event a step event and we're going to drag in some code now the first thing we want to do remember is uh, figure out the normal vector now to do that um, we're going to be using the length there function so normal x is equal to length there underscore x we want it to have a length of 1 and the direction will be whatever the rotation of the object is plus 90 to be able to find the normal of uh, that object so what we're going to have is minus physics underscore rotation because the rotations in the physics world is um, clockwise whilst in game maker it's anti-clockwise so putting that minus over here is very important 
plus 90. And we want to do something similar for the y. Length there underscore y. 1 minus fit rotation plus 90. Now, if you are not familiar with length their x and length their y, what it basically does is take a direction and a length and it, and it will calculate uh, the x and y component of the offset that this direction and um, length will create. So if I bring up paint over here, I think I could show you what I mean, is that if you have uh, a, a circle with radius uh, length, with radius length, and you have um, a rotation which can be any length, uh, which will be you know the same length again, with angle uh, theta, with, uh, with angle theta, it will basically tell you. Uh, if this was the point zero zero, it will tell you what this is in x and y values. So it will tell this distance over here and uh, this distance over here. So if we bring back game maker up, and we can then move on. Now, now that we know the normal x and normal y values, we actually want to do the dot product. So dot is equal to dot product. So, as you can see, the dot product thing is already built into Game Maker, so that makes it quite easy to work with. So, we want the nx and ny, which are normal values, and then we want our current velocity. Now, um, you can use the physics um, variables, linear velocity. Now, these are actually in um, pixels per uh, per second, and we want them in meters per second because we're working with newtons and whatnot. So we actually want to times it by our world size. And remember, we set it to zero. Well, we should have set it to zero point zero two five. Now, did this save? It, it, it doesn't save. For some reason, it is not working. And this is very weird. Here you go. It's saved. 0 0.025. And we want to have physics there times 0 0.025. And we want the same thing with the y. Times 0 0.025. And so now that we have the dot product, which remember is the relationship between our normal vector and our linear vector, we want to find um, the uh, we want to find our um, lateral velocity. So lvx lateral velocity x is equal to dot times n x. So uh, n x will be a remember is the the normal vector with length 1 times the dot product. So the dot product is the relationship between our li vi linear velocity and our uh, normal vector. So by timesing it, by timesing the dot vector by the normal vector, we get the lateral velocity, which is quite important. And LVY similarly is equal to dot times NY. So now that we have our lateral velocities, what we want to do is um, nullify that velocity, which means basically if we're moving it in, in this lateral way, we want to take it away. The way we do that is applying an impulse. Apply impulse. And so the x position and y position will just be x and y. And x impulse and y impulse will be actually the um, will be our lateral velocity times uh, the mass because if you're heavier you need more force uh, and of course we want it to be well, right now we're adding on to our current lateral velocity but we want to take it away so we put a minus in front and we do the same thing for 
um, LVY times fin mass. So right now what we have is a tire which will only move in one direction and the way to show that is by adding a new event for example a global mouse left button and we can just simply add a force physics underscore apply uh, I spelled something wrong by force x y and the mouse underscore x and mouse underscore y but we do want to do that minus x minus that, or is it minus x, I can't remember, minus x, minus y. And if we check that out, we will see um, that once everything is compiled, the tire will try to move, If that is if I place the tire inside the world, but the tire will try to move towards the mouse, but it won't work if um, if it tries to move uh, in the normal direction. So if I click here, as you can see, it's going to move towards my mouse, and that's all nice. But if I click underneath, as you can see, it has a lot more trouble because it's trying. It's not rolling in that direction. So it's not rolling quite easily. And if I try to go in diagonal, as you can see, it's going to do this kind of weird pattern because it can't move in this direction. So this is exactly what we need. So that's all for this video. But next video, I will show you how to actually use it inside a car game, how you can actually place it onto a car. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.